Happy Sunday, Sunday everyone. everyone. What a joy it is to be alive. What an even greater joy it is to be saved. I want to welcome you this morning to our morning of worship here at the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church of Hamilton, Georgia. Here, where we seek to glorify God through the love of Jesus Christ, anchored in the power of the Holy Spirit. Also here at Friendship Baptist Church, we know that in the presence of the Lord, there is liberty. So feel free to dance and sing, free to lift your hands and worship, because the Son has set us free indeed. So listen, here's your opportunity to participate in our worship right where you are. So please join our services already in progress.
Elohim has given us a fresh start. Fresh start to the point where God is going to, again, not by formality, but I believe God is going to do some great things. And he's going to use some great people to do those things that are going to be done great. But in order for us to do it, I believe God says to us to get back to the root. Go back to the basics. And therefore, our word for today is found in the book of Ephesians, chapter 4. And I want to look at one verse, and I'm going to exegete a couple of verses before and after. And I would that you would hold your Bibles open and get your pen and a paper out so that you will know where the Lord is leading us. Ephesians chapter 4, as you are staying seated, when you find these words, I want you to look with me to verse number 5. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 5. When we have it, let us register by saying amen. amen. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 4 verse 5. It says, One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Let me repeat that to you. He said, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Our church theme for 2019 is going to come from, this, from the scripture, Ephesians 4 and 5. And I think this, this year we're going, is going to be following God faithfully. Amen. Following God faithfully. Say it, say it with me. Following God faithfully. God, I believe, has an interest, interesting mindset. He wants everybody to be saved. But the reality is everybody is not going to be saved. When God positioned us, he did it, I believe, from the foundation of the world. He knew who we were, he knew what we were going to do, and he knew what we were going to become. And so in our theme today, where it talks about following God faithfully, the question I ask myself as I've been reading is how do we do this? And God comes back by way of discussion and says, have simple church. Are y'all with me? First said, we don't have simple church anymore. There's not enough praying. There's not enough support. There's not enough finances. There's not enough people. Here's what I want you to know. Is that if you're doing church for any other reason than what I've just read in your hearing, we're doing it in vain. Am I making sense? Verse 5 says, alone, he says, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. As Paul introduces it, he does it according to verse 1. Look what he says in verse 1. He says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech ye that you are worthy of the vocation wherein ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Here's what he says. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Do y'all see that? Yeah. In verses 1, 2, and 3, what Paul seeks to do is simply establish the church. <laughs> Let me suggest to you, friendship, the church is found in verses 1, 2, and 3. If we're outside of one, two, and three, 
then the church is outside of the will of God. All right. All right. What does God want us to do in 2019? Here it is. He wants us to have simple church. Amen. Get back to the basics. We cannot, listen to me clearly, we cannot worship God rightly and do not know the expectations of God. Amen. Am I making sense? Because if God is going to bless me, if he's going to bless you, if he's going to bless our church, then we got to know the expectations of God. Simple church says that we got to get back to basics. Amen. It's not just for me to do. It's not just for me to come and put together all this stuff on paper, use my computer, email uh, people, email people, email me back to so get things in line, in days, go through a formality. What God says, simple church is about having faith in a God. Amen. And not just any God, but the God. Amen. That's why I said we got to follow God faithfully. So how are we going to do that? There are three things we're going to do when I be in my seat. Number one, if we're going to follow God faithfully, say faithfully. Amen. First thing we got to do is we got to learn to change our witness. Following God faithfully. First thing he says, Dave, the church is going to have simple church to follow me faithfully. I don't know what to change our witness. What is a witness? All of us know what a witness is. A witness is that person who can testify of the happenings of something else. Here's my question to us as a church. Can we rightly testify that Jesus Christ is Lord in our life? Amen. That's a personal question you've got to ask yourself. Amen. Dave, can you actually testify that Jesus Christ is Lord in your life? The question is asked, if I can, my testimony is shown not by what is said, but by what is seen. Am I making sense? Let, let, I want to encourage you to know, if we're going to change our witness, our witness has to be more than Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Let me say it again. It has to be more than Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. In this, what I believe is the state of our church's address, our church is in a state of emergency. Because we are allowing those that we know and love mm -hmm. to die and not know God. All right. And we don't do what I call, first of all, change our witness. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be at fault. All right. Guess who's going to be at fault? We are. Am I making sense? Yeah. Because the witness is found in the text. He said this. There's nothing you got to do. He, he anchors in verse 5. He says, teach them these three things. Say it with me. One Lord, one, Lord, one, faith, one faith, and one baptism. one baptism. If we can believe that, then I believe God will be pleased with us. Because when we change our witness, watch this. Our witness is shown by what is seen, by what is done. What are we doing? Here, here's the question I'm asking. What are we doing? Are we sitting on our pews? Are we waiting for deacons to do devotion? Are we waiting for choir to sing? Waiting for pastor to preach? And then we go out and we're doing the same thing. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, God says it's time for simple church. Follow him faithfully. Amen. Meaning that I have to, number one, get rid of any distractions and disturbances. Yeah, right. yeah. If you're going to have a witness, you have to get rid of distractions yeah. and disturbances. Yeah. Right. How many of y'all ever watched court TV? I have. How many of y'all have been on jury duty before? I have. A real case. Yeah. What does the judge do to you? He isolates you from the outside world. Amen. Why? Because he does.
does not want your witness to be changed or be tainted with. And so listen, ladies and gentlemen, what he does is he gets you away, number one, from disturbances and distractions so that you can now have a clear focus on God. That's what he says. So I said, listen, if we're going to change our witness, number one, got to get rid of dis the, uh, disturbances and distractions. That's what you put on your eight notes. You take your notes out with me because we're we going to ride this horse till it needs some water. Right. Get rid of disturbances and distractions, but then change our focus. What, what is my focus? It's in the text. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. If my focus is anything other than what's in verse number five, then my witness has been tainted. Amen. That's why I tell you all the time, you got to watch what you say. Amen. How, how many of y'all know people say stuff and then when they say it, get right back to you? Because our witness is not concrete, our witness is not sure in God. Look, look what he says. He says, your witness has to be concrete because look what he says in verse three. He says, pushing, that word endeavor means to push. He says, endeavoring to what? Keep the unity of the what? Spirit in the what? Bond of peace. If I can't help the church pull or push, I don't need to make a distraction to get more weight on it. In other words, old folks, if I can't help them, I sure I'm not going to what? Hurt them. Can, can I talk to some, some folks here real, real transparently? All right. All right. You don't want, or you don't go outside your house and talk down to your house, do you? Do you? Well, some of y'all may do you? This is a house. Stained glass windows, padded pews, carpet. It's our house. We don't go out of our house and talk about our church. All right. How many of y'all been married before or married now? How many, how many of y'all are husband? Let me talk to this nigga name. Right. How many times I made you mad? No, don't answer that. Never mind. <laughs> how many times you made your husband mad or made your spouse mad? You don't go out and talk them down, do you? Mm -mm. And I see some gray hairs shaking. So God says to us the same way we don't talk down our church because guess what? Our witness is being tainted. Amen. They who are on the outside are not going to come on the inside if what we're doing on the inside is the same as what they're doing on the outside. So he says to us today, we have to learn to follow God. What? Faithfully. That means the encouragement here's the state of our, our church. If we're not in Bible study on Wednesday, we ought to be in Bible study. Now you're going to hear this a, a little bit more on Wednesday. Our Bible study has been cut up again, and I'll tell you how we're going to do it Wednesday. But our Bible study has been cut up so that we can get the most out of our learning. It's easy to drive a car when you know what you're driving, isn't that right? Yeah. It's easy to shout when you know who you're shouting about. Is that right? Yeah. And I, I, I know we got a whole lot to do. I know we got a whole lot going on. But we got to take time to study. If we don't, our witness will never what? Come on, y'all. say Our witness will what? It'll never what? Change. And that's why you see people in the same place doing the same thing, and no results have been made different. Yeah. How many of y'all want our church to move? I do. Yeah. And I know you hear people all the time that come in and it seems like what we're doing, we're overbearing. But guess what? We become overbearing because it seems like the weight is on our shoulders. But if I can get you to help me carry, and I get you to help me carry, oh, yeah. then guess what? My burdens will be what? Right. Right. First thing he says, he says to us, he says, we're going to have simple church. He says, we got to remove disturbances and distractions. And he says, we got to do what? Change our focus. The services and distractions. Then he says, we got to change our 
for us. Okay? Second thing, say number two. I'm almost there. When you change your witness, the second thing you can do now is you can celebrate God's word. I don't tell you how to celebrate. You hear me tell you all the time. Celebrate, say something back to God. Let the Lord know what he's done for you. Do, do something. Y'all even say that, right? Because your celebration is your celebration. Can, can I help some folks right here? Only God knows the authenticity of your celebration. Let, let me say it one more time. Only God knows the authenticity of your celebration. What am I celebrating? Here it is in the text. One Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That, that's, I'm celebrating his word because it's his word that produced my what? Faith. My faith that has been produced is not in myself. Let me, let me stop there and, and let me say, when, when, you, when you, number two, number two supposed to be here, when you celebrate his word, your faith is not in your ability. Some of us think that all we have, uh, the only reason we're, we're doing what we're doing is because of what we can do. But what if God cuts your legs off? What, what, what if God cuts your hands off? What, what if God uh, 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 give, gives you a medical issue where you can no longer talk? What is your witnesses going to be? What is your faith going to be in? Your faith still has to be maintained in God. And you know, time something that dr drastic, I believe the word is, happens to us, we believe God has done it. Well, while we know he's the orchestrator of everything, here's what God says to us. You got to know, sometimes God will allow you to go through some things in life that you can return and give him glory. celebrate his word because I, I'm not the only one. How many of y'all have been through hell and how old I have? Yeah. I've had some challenging days in my life. Yeah. But but I anchor in my thing for this week. I'm a faithful to follow God because watch this. I'm on number two. I'm going to celebrate the word. Yeah, yeah. Watch this. I'm on number two. I'm going to celebrate the word. Yeah, yeah. The second thing you can do now is you can celebrate God's word. Celebrate his word. Word. Why, why celebrate his word? If we're going to faithfully follow God, my shout in celebrating his word is because his word is what sustains me. That's why I celebrate. I, I, I try to blow the, the roof off this building. Because if I can yell when Alexis is playing softball or basketball, surely. I can shout for God. <laughs> Celebrate his word because his word is what sustains us. I tell you all the time that he said, you see that turn on the fence pole? He didn't get that by himself. Somebody helped him to get to where he was. Can I tell you what the somebody is or who somebody is? That somebody is God through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Watch this. I, I can't celebrate if my witness hadn't been changed. Hmm? Some of the biggest problems we have, we bring it on our word. Yeah. Say amen. amen. Some of the biggest problems we have is we bring it on ourselves. Amen. But can I tell you, in your time of trouble, if you learn to celebrate his word, God will do for you what you can't do for your yeah. how, how, how do I know? I know because he, he, here's my A, my A cause. I know to celebrate his word is because God is control of everything. Somebody missed that shot. Can y'all wait on me to holler and move? God is in control of what? Everything. everything. He's in control of my highs. He's in control of my lows. He's in control of my good days. He's 
control of my bad things. He's in control of my ups, my down, my in, my out, whatever it is. That's why I'm going to celebrate the word of God because why? Hey, God is in control. Y'all yeah. know God is in control. Yeah. Do y'all ever know he's in control? Yeah. God, God celebrate his word. Why? Wow. What a mighty move of God that was. I was electrified. I hope and pray that you were too. First Lady Arneetha, your dad, and myself, we would like to say thank you for listening and tuning in to our worship experience this morning. And we want you to know that we hear you and we thank you for each encouraging word as you faithfully tune in each week to our worship services. Listen, if you were blessed and would like to be a blessing to this media ministry, you can send any donations of love to P.O. Box 546, Hamilton, Georgia. 31811 or simply download the Givelify app and you can search the name Friendship Hamilton. And remember, as Pastor Day always says, we're not smiling on God, but, but God, God is, is smiling, smiling on us. us.